I remember actually my dad would always kind of uh, basically play that whole like cloud game with me. You know, you'd either you know talk about like what we saw in the clouds or you know if we were in the woods he'd kind of point out the negative space between trees or something and just say like notice how that looks like this. I had a very overactive visual imagination when I was young anyways, so so it kind of planted those seeds in me very very early. If you think about what happens as you're navigating the real world, you're simultaneously in that world and in your imagined variation of that world based on where your brain goes with what it looks at and the associations it makes. I mean, I certainly wouldn't say I hallucinated, but I definitely uh, could manifest imagery very easily in my head. I was a huge collector of things. I've been fascinated since I was a kid with like junkyards, um, like uh, charity thrift stores, uh, tag sales and really anything I could find. So I was always kind of a little pack rat that would keep little precious treasures. I'm just looking for things that I think I could use to build something even more interesting looking. I like National Geographic because I like the idea that this is more about taking imagery from a sense of real life and reinterpreting it. I think that we have things, you know, buried down in each and uh, each strata, and it's a matter of just digging through the magazine and you know excavating it for for resource. I do enjoy the outcome, of course, of pieces when I work on them, but really I just enjoy the overall process itself. Because we are inherently unique, anybody could follow a surreal process and arrive at different work, you know? Because if, if you're actually following it, it's only going to be characteristics of you that come out. And so um, there's no magic, like, mystery to the process. The process is really just a way to facilitate, you know, opening things up. And in that sense, I equate a lot of this to shamanistic practices, staring at flame. You know, no individual shaman owns the right to the flame. You know, it's just the flame evokes something and, you know, it's used again and again. Or uh, reading of tea leaves or, you know, the spilling of entrails back in the day, you know. They're all defining methods, and honestly, I think they were the early swarms of Rorschach. I do like the discourse between what people consciously see and what they choose not to see, because people who want to see darkness will find dark components in a piece that you use to build something. People who don't want to see darkness will see the primary, like, let's say, lighter theme. You know, so really your unconscious, subjective point of view is what colors how you read the work.